The Bible said he went home with Matthew, and all he said was, follow me. No, no big, you know, all this drama we see on TV, just him, follow me. And he had so much to offer that Matthew followed him. I don't know what they said, but when he got through, there was a change. So that's the mark of an encounter. There is a change. You can't tell me that you've met Jesus and you're still lying and cussing and pulling out your piece. No, 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 no. Can't still say you're threatening people and carrying on in the street and talking about there's going to be a showdown. You understand? No, 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 no. You can't act like Nene's first cousin and still be saved. Oh, there's a difference. There's a difference. And what a difference. It's almost like somebody came in and gave you a whole inner facelift or transformation. That's why the Bible says you're changed. It means you're transformed. Not instantly, but every day, every day. You can't know yourself. Every day you got to look yourself in the mirror. Is this me? Is this me? I would have reacted a certain way. But look at me now. I can take it. I can take it. I can take it. Ah, if they were in time past, we would have been in it. But now I can sit down and take it. I can take it. It. Not because I'm weak, but because I'm changed. Lord, have mercy. Lord, some of you ought to celebrate your husband's change and your wife's change and your children's change. Nobody can do it like Jesus. That's why he died on the cross, so that you can be different. Come on and praise him this morning. I feel like celebrating Jesus. I feel like celebrating the power of change. Come on and open your mouth and let me hear you say, hallelujah. Change. That's what it's all about. You find people following people, following the Dalai Lama. He came to New York the other day and paralyzed the whole city. Nobody could get through Manhattan because the Dalai Lama is here. What are people looking for? Tranquility, centeredness, purpose, relief from stress, connection with principles that will bring order and beauty and love in their lives. People are looking to connect with the afterlife, calling up their dead and, and trying to hear from their dead auntie and their dead grandmother. You understand? People are searching, searching, searching. And the reason why the church has failed is because we have failed to talk about Jesus. All the answers that they're looking for in other places can be found in him. He declared, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No other fancy gospel. Come on here. Ain't nobody putting their hands behind their head this morning and calling you out. I see, I see, I see a red hat with a blue shoes. I see, I see a Cadillac coming in your life. I see, I see a man with a pink shirt. Ah, that's manipulation. I see Jesus this morning high and lifted up and his train filled the temple and the angels the angels the angels the angels cry holy lord have mercy holy the whole earth is full of his glory come on and put your hands together i want to hear you praise jesus simply jesus simply jesus tell your neighbor simply jesus the bible said now jesus changed Matthew's life, and guess what Matthew did? He had a party. Can you imagine having a saved party? A party to celebrate your salvation. No different from the woman at the well. When she met Jesus and he changed her life, what did she do? She went back to the city and caused a ruckus. She created some waves. Just like when you get a new car, a new job, whatever, you call everybody, you're so excited. But somehow the church has gotten very quiet, very passive. We don't want anybody to know we're Christians anymore. We keep it on the down low. I'm not going there this morning. I'm going to stay. Say, I'm not hitting that. I'll change a little bit. It got a little decent, so I'm not going there this morning. But, see, we want to keep things quiet. We, won't, we don't want people on the job to know we don't laugh at those jokes anymore and we don't, we don't hang out 
and club it with them anymore. We want, we want them to think that, oh, we're just going through a little quiet moment. But these people in the Bible, our example, it was written for our example. What do you do when you get saved? You have a party, you tell it, you tell it, you tell it, you tell it. You get all excited. And then you invite all your friends over and tell your friends, do you know what happened to me? Come see a man that told me everything I did. The church has not, has lost its excitement about Jesus. We're excited about church, but not about Jesus. We're excited about music, but not about Jesus. We're excited about plays and concerts, but not about Jesus. We're excited about projects and buildings, but not about Jesus. We're excited about multi-million dollar planes and, and all kinds of prosperity, but not about Jesus. But in the Bible, people got excited. Ah, he had a party. The same man that hustled now had a party. And guess who he invited? All the other hustlers. He didn't invite people who are already, because you see, we only invite people who are saved. Even when we come to church, we only speak to the saints. We sit with our friends, we talk to our friends. We have created a whole little elite kind of thing. We don't reach out to people. Every time you walk in here and see somebody new, you should want to know their name, how they're doing, who is your mother, who is your father. You should, be, you should reach out beyond yourself because you have something to offer. A person came in here for a reason. And it's not always coming from the pulpit. 99% is coming from the person sitting next to you. Ah, people have the power. You have the power in the pew to touch people that bishop can't touch. When you touch them, you bring them and bishop will touch them. But you have to touch them from the pew. So he went and called all his hustling friends. When Jesus got up in there, the hustling friends were waiting on him. The disciples were there waiting on him. Why did he call his hustling friends? Because this joy that I have, this joy that I have, the world didn't keep me and the world can't take it away. Come on, hustler. We used to be hustlers together, but there's a different kind of life now. You ought to come in here every Sunday with a car loader. You ought to ride in your bad BMW filled with people, strangers, not of saints from other churches. We don't want them. Let them stay over there and aggravate their pastor. We want people who have never known Jesus. This church is as a mandate to fill this place with people who are hungry, people who are brokenhearted, people who are wounded. And it's not bishop's job or the elder's job. It's your job. Your hairdresser ought to be here this morning. Your dentist ought to be be here this morning. Your neighbor ought to be here this morning. The cantankerous uncle, ah, uh, the drunken aunt, uh, the drug addict nephew ought to be sitting right next to you this morning. Why? Because Jesus got the answer. He's got the power to break the back of sin. Uh, he's got the power to take somebody and make them into what they ought to be. And if you believe it, you ought to be on a manhunt. You ought to be looking around. Who needs Jesus? Who needs Jesus? Uh, come to the man. Uh, come to the fountain that never runs dry. Come on, church. It's time to go to another level of evangelism. Put your hands together. I want to hear you praise him. Oh, come on and help me praise him this morning. Hallelujah. This is a beautiful church. You don't have to tell me how beautiful it is. I know how it got started. But God didn't give you this beautiful church for you to sing and run in here every Sunday and feel contented. It ought to bother you that your family member is not safe. You ought to spend wake, wakeful nights worrying. You ought, it ought to bother you that your neighbor is still having those kinds of crazy parties and her children are all in jail. It ought to bother you that your young people that you sent off to college come back talking funny and don't want to be in church. It ought to bother you. The publican went and got more publicans. The publican went and got more publicans. And the publican went and got more publicans. And the publican went and got more publicans. And the delivered woman here should go and get some more people who need to be delivered. And you that got out of drugs ought to go and get some more drug addicts. And you some pimps ought to go and get some pimps. Come on here. And you liars ought to go get some liars. And you hustlers ought to go get some hustlers. Isn't that what Jesus said to Peter? When you're converted, when you're turned around, go get somebody. And I'm commanding you, I'm telling God to make you uncomfortable. Take away your appetite and upset your apricot ah, until you go and find somebody. The church is calling for sinners. Jesus is calling for sinners. This is an end time call. Lord have mercy. Ah, the world is almost on the precipice of being destroyed. Bombs everywhere. People becoming human bombs. Can blow up a railroad station. Can kill people at the drop of a hat. The signs are
of judgment everywhere and God is still saying ah oh, there are more to be saved somebody in your life somebody in your home needs to hear that Jesus is the sweetest name I know and he's just the same as his holy name that's the reason why I love him so oh do you love him this morning if you love him you'll help me praise him if you love him you'll holler hallelujah if you love him you'll praise him from your heart that's the reason why I love him Love him.